Okay, so let me uh, kind of show you another example of this. In the last example, I painted a box to look like rust. Okay, all right. Now, let's think about that for a second. I now can only use that texture on a box. <laughs> a box with UVs that look like this. And this other example I'm going to show you is the fact that oh, it, it's the same same way. Okay, I produced it the, the exact same way. The only thing else I didn't leave off or I left off was the uh, baking process. So the ambient occlusion and all that other stuff. I left it out of this process. And then I just went into Photoshop and said, you know what? I'm just going to make this giant texture. Call it rust. So here's my specular of it. And I made a bump out of it, too. I'm just turning some of this stuff off. And here's my color variation of it. So all this is, let me kind of break this down for you, was just like I did before, I painted noise. So I painted this huge, big blob of nastiness right here, and I turned it down. So this is just a bunch of junk, and I turned it down. That's on a linear dodge ad. This is just random noise using that brush that I produced before. And here's some more noise. Now, the thing about this is if you want different variations of rust, you can just say, you know, I just need that out of the picture. I just like these two into the picture. But I can make a large variation of just because I use that pixel brush. And then what I did is um, I could take and brighten the outside edges if I wanted to. And I could lower that down quite a bit. I can also shade it. So what I did here is I took a, a giant black normal. Um, I just filled it with black and I turned it down to like 10%. This is essentially tinting back anything. If I get too nuts with the contrast on stuff, oftentimes I do this. And then what I did is I brought it back using a uh, contrast brightness. So, so that way it's. So now I can have different variations of color. And all these are are just over and over again, I decided to put different things into play. This is a huge de desaturation, so I desaturated a little bit. Maybe I didn't want that much red involved. The point here is, you know, I'm just tired of seeing the same old stuff all over again. So just, you know, you should very exper you should experiment with textures, making them yourself, and if you're going to limit yourself to painting onto the object, that's one thing. You could definitely do that. Uh, for a box, however, I just wanted to make my own texture. And, you know, here's the, here's the kind of variation of it. If I zoom way in on this thing. Which doesn't seem to be working. There we go. I think my middle mouse button finally had it so I have a higher res version here and a lower res version you know I, I would think of it this way this is a good game thing to do okay this is probably what you would do for a game you got to paint it towards the object this would be more of a CG thing I would think but either way works this is just really believable up close um, this you know, when you're running around a game level and you see a rusty box, uh, that's a good 
that's a good thing that you can tell it's rust right off the bat. To render this, all I did was I stuck this giant spotlight out here. So I made a spotlight and I turned it on an angle. And I changed its spotlight properties to say use ray trace shadows. I also increased its penundrum and its drop off. Now that'll yield some very harsh shadows. So I didn't want that. I wanted something with really nice soft shadows. So that's where I stuck a spotlight in the scene and turned it down to 0.25. Again, these these are, can be found here. Spotlight and point light. We'll get into these lights later. Um, for right now, I just wanted to give you kind of a, a look-see at this. There we go. Here would be the one that I that produced the high res one. Here's the lower res one. And you could definitely tell that's rust. Like, and look at the nice cut on the outside edge of these things. And it'll survive higher lighting that way. Like, let's say I take this thing and this light and rank up the lighting. because I've included all the stuff I need to back in uh, my texture, you know, like my texture handles lighting, it handles the specularity of things, it handles the bump of things. So therefore, it's going to be able to survive very high levels of light. Where if I did it the other way, um, let's say I just slapped just a color map on there, uh, the color map is not going to be able to support higher variations of light within my scene. So now you can see this is a very pitted um, texture. This one's not so pitted, but if I got closer to it, it certainly would. And let me see here. If you want to straighten out these node networks, you just click this button. Here's my node network for uh, the high res version. And if I want to see the other one, exact same network. That way I can get to certain things like bumps if I wanted to. Sometimes you can ump a bump by going in here to the default color and changing this just a... And yeah, mouse has pretty much had it. And you can also adjust it back here on the bump node itself. Uh, let's say if I wanted an insane amount of bump, I could put two. So so the higher var variation, you're going to probably need to up the bump radius or the bump a little bit. There we go. The final gather really does hit it home. You notice like that looked really bumpy here, but the final gather has evened it out some. 
I think the hardest thing to kind of learn is, you know, it might look awful in Photoshop sometimes as far as the texture goes, but you should definitely try it out because, you know, the most, the ugliest uh, texture in the world doesn't look half bad in Maya if you paint it correctly. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the little um, making rust or making grunge. It's just an example. Let's move on to the next video.